Hello folks, Michael Madden here again, uh, or Matt Castell, whichever you prefer. Of all the videos that I'm going to be making on motion picture cameras, this may be my favorite. This is a camera I've been looking for for 20 years, and it's one of my favorites of all time. It is a Willart 35mm professional motion picture camera. This particular one was manufactured in 1919. Absolute gorgeous antique fully functioning camera would shoot great images today and it's going to be my pleasure to demonstrate it in load film and show you how this works so stick around first thing I'd like to show you is just a we'll walk around the camera here's the front of the camera the Willard motion picture camera with the label the front of the built-in Willard also made a second model later on that had a separate finder. This is built in, cannot get lost. And this arrow here, these markings, are f-stops. This is how you adjust the f-stop on this camera. It's fascinating how easy it is. On the left side, you have, this by the way is for a carrying handle if you want to put on there. You have, this is where the side finder is. On top is the button for the fader, which I'll demonstrate. It's fascinating. This is a film punch. So you know where to, uh, Start and end your shots for developing. Here on the back here, you crank. Goes right on there. Right here is a revolution counter, so every time you turn the crank, it goes around once. So that's eight frames of film for every turn. Here you have your footage counter, and here, this is a dial to show you uh, what angle your shutter's at. Now you can dissolve by hand or anything else you want. And that moves and opens and closes it. Uh, opens to 180, 170, 180. The dissolve will close over five feet of film, so it's pretty amazing. Ten cranks. Right here, this is where you reach in for your critical focus to look in here on a piece of ground film. Uh, magnifier, and here is your uh, focus dial. And here is the back of the built in finder. Now, on the right side, all there's here is a wing nut to uh, reset your uh, reader comma here. Next I wanted to show you the top of the camera. Here are your magazines. This is the back of the camera here and that's what you take up as your front as your feed. You'll recognize this it's very similar to a path A. I'll explain that afterwards. But here are these two knobs. These are neural knobs. You loosen this, slide it back pull out the magazine and you see this nib and that's how they attach into the camera and lock in. Put it back on, slide it back. Tie that neural knob down. Alright, I'm going to show you the inside of the front of the camera before we load it. You'll see it looks very similar to a Pathé and here's why. Pathé must have had to pay a royalty to Willart to use this camera. Uh, this camera design and mechanics. It's pretty much the same and it's all based on the Lumiere movement of 1895. Look at this. This is so smooth. It's one of the smoothest cameras I've ever cranked. You can see here uh, the mechanism of the film punch and when you're focusing here's goes forward and back on a dovetail base. Fantastic. Uh, I wanted to show you this. This is a hub. That is for your top loop when you're loading and I'll, I'll demonstrate that and you'll see what I mean. That holds three frames of film and believe it or not, the original velvet is still inside of it. Now, when you put this cover back on, there is a pin here for your f-stop. You have to line that up so you don't damage it. So when you put the cover back on, put your clips back, you gotta line it up and make sure that it's on correctly and you don't damage that and that's perfect. Now here's the back of the camera again. I'm going to open this up. You can see this viewing tube is right here and this velvet film guide to not scratch your emulsion. Here's the pin for your uh, focus and this great mechanism. One of the great things about this is it's so smooth and most cameras when it has an auto dissolve, you see the mechanism when you engage it, when you engage that it usually has some drag to it. This has none. This is fascinating. This is fascinating. Here let me Come around here and I'll show you. You know, you just you're cranking and you push this button and it all, this all this great clockwork mechanism starts to move your uh, indicator dial here. 
So it's really fascinating. And I'll show you the dissolve through the lens uh, before this is over. Okay, before we get started uh, loading, I'm going to show you how we load the feed here. You do this in the dark, of course, you put it through here, through the light trap, uh, the velvet light trap, very easy, very much like a path A. And just put the cover on and screw it shut. Now this is absolutely light tight, this cover. One drawback to the path A, they had a little bit of problem with that, but not with the willow. So, and then put it right on top here and show you in close up exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is feed the film from the top here, connect it with the sprocket. Yeah, right through. Beautiful. Now, make sure the film isn't pinching at the top, then you lock the magazine in. Now, the top loop and the bottom loop are extremely important, but it's very simple. As I showed you in the front of the camera, that hub that held three frames of film, that goes in right under here. You can fit your finger in there. Uh, a little cumbersome. But, okay, we get it under there, that's the first thing we do. It's about three frames, you'll notice when it stops moving. Now, then you have this held in the film guide, and you close your gate, lock it down. Now, now we can move it. Now, you want about a foot and a half of film, a little more to start off with. The bottom loop's extremely important to have it the correct length, and how I figured it out, and then I read it in Carl Brown's book. If you can hold the film to the floor, we got a little too much, they film to the floor of the camera gently, and it just barely hits the sprocket. We got a little too much. That's it. Then we know we have the right size loop. So, with the, on the sp same sprocket, right up through here. Very simple. Comes right up and through. Now, what you do, this is the pin for the focusing, but this goes around there. And you notice the emulsions on the outside, so it just goes around. It doesn't get scraped. So you can see it working. That is exactly and how easy it is to load it. Now we're going to uh, close this up and change the shot to show you. Okay, next here, we're going to uh, bring the film up and put it up into the uh, taking magazine, up to the light trap, very simple. When you put it on, be sure again not to pinch the film. Slide over the pin, lock it down. Pull enough through that you can wrap your film up here on the core. Times. Okay, now, what I do here now, just so you don't forget, you put the spring belt on the magazine, the back magazine, and that's in there. Then you put your door on. Film loaded, the spring belt is on, we're ready to go. You've probably checked your f-stop and your focus to do whatever it is, the shot you want to do. And focus here, everything's ready. We'll roll up a couple from your film. Uh, make sure that this is set to where you want your shutter angle. Set your footage counter and you're ready to go. Next I'm going to show you through the lens the dissolving shutter. It's wonderful. Okay, as I said, this closes over five feet of film. That's 10 revolutions of the crank, approximately. So, this is I'll give you an idea how it looks. And there you go. Now, if you're doing an overlapping dissolve, you'd fade out, then you'd crank backwards the 10 uh, revolutions of the crank, and then when you had your next scene set to do an overlapping dissolve, you just push the button down on the top. And there we go. Fades in. Very simple. Beautifully machined. Works fantastic. Okay, now from the front with the camera open, you can see the shutter blade here, and it's open all the way. Now, let's show you the mechanism. With the dissolve. And to open, same button. Beautiful. I want to talk quickly about the built-in side finder, which I really 
I think is fascinating. It's right here. This is a focus. It goes in and out. It's a very simple screw mount to focus. Now I'll show you from the back. Okay, so here's the built-in viewfinder from the back. Now what you would do is you would find your frame line exactly what you want to film through your critical focuser here. Once you had the frame line, you would match the viewfinder up with the frame line you see here. Just find the center and how this works is this moves side to side and the aperture moves side to side and I'll show you that in close up. Okay, here you are in close up of the aperture in the viewfinder. And if you see if I turn this, it, the inside aperture moves side to side for parallax. You know, if you have it over here, you'd, that would be in close up and have it here would be for a long shot. Very clever. So there you have it, 1919 Willard 35mm professional motion picture camera. As I said, this is a gorgeous antique and it's on everybody's list of cameras they would love to collect. It took me 20 years. This is absolutely original, intact, an incredible working camera. I was super great images today. And I'm so glad I could share it with you today. And I was out.